Hello Leo, welcome to the channel, this is Esnoinche here. Happy New Year to you all. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel, and for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you are connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marshinsky. Some of you may have been in a relationship, could have been in the past, could be current. Others of you, you may be in a situationship and you don't know where it's headed. For a small portion of you, this could also be simply that you have exchanged glances and you know there's something special there, but no one's really speaking up. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that we need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. Ho, 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 Leo. Somebody's been naughty and up to something, up to no good. Oh my goodness. Third party situation for the majority of you. Ah. <sighs> And a whole lot of sexuality. Past life connection. Wow. This is a very intense reading, guys. It's it's so wrong <laughs> what's happening. For some of you, if you're re resonating with this, it's you know it's not right, but it feels right. But you know it's wrong. Um, here we have growth, doubt, order, illness, wellness, nourishment, selfhood, mystery, sexuality. Then we have shape-shifting under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. Some of you may feel that these feelings and emotions are your own, Leo. <clears throat> and that is because of the past life card here. In addition to that, you have some other cards also that are very intense. So these feelings, you may be mirroring each other, could just simply be vice versa. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Leo, there's a part of me that really wants to grow with you and get to know you more. Many things have happened in this connection, and sometimes it almost feels as if things have been rushed, as if everything's going too fast. I feel the need, and I have this desire to slow down and to learn more about you, your history, your background. What do you want in the future? Long after you retire, what are your dreams? There is these questions I have in my mind that I ponder and I just don't really talk to you about them. I don't ask you. But they do exist. I want to get to know you more on a personal level, as a friend. To know you, life would be much easier for me because then I know your past your present and what you want in the future. But I doubt that you would be willing to do something like this. Certain things have happened in this connection and I realize that, unfortunately, I have changed things. I am someone who almost has ruined, if not truly ruined, this connection. I doubt that the trust and the faith that once existed 
I doubt that it burns bright. I feel that it doesn't. I also feel that in this connection, this doubt that I have, yes, it exists because of the way I have behaved, but it also makes me wonder about this connection and where we are headed. There's no direction to this connection. It's directionless. I find myself stuck on a roadway where I go forwards, backwards, left or right, and I just don't know which way to go. I don't know what's the right path. What should I do to make it right? There's fog all around me. For this reason, I don't know if the choices that I make are the right ones. I don't know. I'm afraid of moving forward, any direction, because I don't want to make a mistake. I feel like I have made quite a mistake before, and I don't want to repeat that. <clears throat> For that reason, I don't make a move at all. And to you, it seems as if I just stand still, not making a choice, not making a decision. There's a part of me that I haven't really expressed to you that you don't really know about. I don't truly... I don't truly want to not be with you. I, I do want to be with you. But there are certain things that weigh me down below the surface of this water. Responsibilities, restrictions, constraints, burdens hindrances, obstacles, trauma, emotional trauma that I myself have gone through. It's hard for me to be with you the way that you would like me to, because these things weigh me down. They make me feel depressed. There's a sense of desperation and despair. And when I feel like this, I don't feel confident enough to be with you. I don't feel strong enough to purge myself from this, to release myself from this, and to move into your arms. I just can't do that. It's as if these things have latched themselves onto me, onto my skin. They don't let go, like leeches. I knew I have found someone who is truly the perfect partner. You are someone who I admire and feel the sense of fulfillment. This feeling that I feel is emotional, spiritual, and physical, where you fulfill me in all of those ways. And it feels right. You have that ability Nobody else does. I have noticed this. I also feel that in this connection, the things that I have said and done in the past, they have changed you as a person. Your personality, your mindset, everything. I feel that so much has changed that now you are very guarded, defensive, very cautious, and I'm afraid to approach you because now you look more independent, self-reliant, self-sufficient. Yes, you were this before, but I feel that these things have changed between us and I've turned you into a person that you never were once before. For me, this is a bad thing because now I feel intimidated by you. Once I felt that I conquered you, I had triumphed, I had you in my life, but now I don't. Reigniting that flame is hard because now I don't know you at all. 
You've changed. And you've changed because of the things that I have said and done, the way I have been with you. I understand why you did what you did. From your point of view, it was the right thing to do. I do feel that in this connection, there is this familiarity that I have with you. It's as if I know you. I feel comfortable with you. Not only that, I feel comfortable with with my body with you. It's a strange feeling. I don't feel shy in a way, although I do, but it's different. The shyness is different. I question the universe, why is it that you are in my life? Why now? Why not before? Why not long ago? Because there must be a reason why you're in my life now. Why now? Are we supposed to be together? With you, I feel this level of comfort that I've never felt before with anyone else. I feel comfortable with you. I feel at home with you. I feel that so many things that have happened between us, that they were supposed to happen. And no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I always end up thinking about you. And I can't stop obsessing over your body. You are so divine in so many ways. I fantasize about you. And I wish for you. Because I've never felt this before with anyone else, this type of a deep, sensual connection. And I know you feel it too. It's more than any other connection I have felt. It is intense. I also feel that no matter which direction I'm going in, who I'm with, what I'm doing, there's a part of me that's always yearning and longing for you. It doesn't matter. The feelings and emotions that I have for you, they stand true and tall. And yes, I may be playing the part of someone who is untruthful to a degree, But the real truth is that I desire you and I want you. But I just don't know how to move forward. Because there are certain things that weigh me down. And what I have done to you, it has changed you as a person. And to me, it's like you're a stranger now. I feel intimidated and I don't know how to reach out. Which is why I think starting soft and slow, and small, is the way to go. Getting to know you more, growing with you. Leo. So this is a past life spiritual connection. If some of you are interested in past life readings, right now I have them on hold. I'm not really, um, I'm not really doing those readings right now. But if you want, you can always email me, and I can put you on a waiting list that I do have. Here we have a situation where there's a third party situation. Third party doesn't necessarily have to mean another person that someone's having an affair with. It could mean that. But it also means the time, energy, and effort that this person can be putting into you, that time, energy, effort is being spent elsewhere. Could be on a job, career, projects, money, taking care of a sick loved one, 
making sure that the kids get the attention that they need on the weekends, stuff like that, right? It's somewhere where their energy is being spent somewhere else. And that energy, it's unfortunate, but it's not being directed towards you as much as it should be. All right. Certain things have happened in this connection where it seems as if they have to reboot their system and see how it is, what it is that they can do to be with you. Now, for those of you who are new, I have another channel called Asnoitia Audio on YouTube. The videos from beginning to end are absolutely free. Please have a look at those videos because this, especially with the sexuality card, you're going to be seeing <clears throat> um, two videos there in particular that are very, quite famous actually now. Um, one is called Past Life and Spiritual Connections. The other one is called Sensually Intense Spiritual Connections. You will definitely resonate with those if you are feeling that this is a past life connection. Typically, a past life connection, you can feel the desire um, to the point where it's, you know, it might not be good for you. You know, it might be toxic, but you still want it. Also, you cannot let go. Also, you might feel a sense of obsession. When you have those type of feelings and emotions, it typically does mean that it's way beyond this lifetime. It's from a past life. So that's double the love, double the pain. Sometimes that's how I explain it as, because it's not just from this lifetime, but it's from the past. So it's times two. All right, <clears throat> I have here the Lover's Path Tarot. Interesting. So you have here the Five of Arrows. Five of Arrows and the Four of Staffs. <clears throat> so why do I look at these cards? For those of you who are new, I look at this to see the reason why. This is all about the why. Why did this person fade? Why did they ghost you? Why is there a lack of closure? Why is it that their communication has become less and less as time has gone by? <clears throat> Maybe even breadcrumbing you to a certain point. These cards I read in the reverse. So hopefully this will provide you with a little bit more clarity and understanding as to what's going on, because sometimes people don't talk. They don't talk, they don't tell. We have here the Five of Arrows. This talks about how there was struggle in the past, a lot of struggle in the past, and a sense of distrust along with arguments. Lack of trust that led to conflict, possible defeat or feelings of defeat. This person felt defeated. And then there was ego involved with that too. The need for self-protection or caution. But they were not really doing that. They didn't care. Discomfort and struggle with the situation. Disingenuous surrender. Defeat because of indecisiveness and paranoia and dishonesty. So disingenuous surrender. So they... This is a little example that I have sometimes. So one day, um, a couple is going outside and one of them says, Hey, look, honey, the sky is green. But the other person knows that the sky is not green, it's blue. <laughs> but they will accept what it is just for the sake of not arguing. They don't want to argue. They've had enough. They're on their way out. They're in the driveway. So... That's a disingenuous surrender. The problem is, is that when we continue with that, we build up a different personality in the eyes of our person. And one day we just snap, and then they wonder, who the hell is this person? I, I don't even recognize them anymore. Because there was a whole lot of disingenuous surrendering. Going with the flow, not really arguing about something, letting it go. But deep down, it was upsetting you. And just like a pressure cooker, at some point, poof, it's going to go. Steam. Steam a-going. This is something that happened here. 
that somebody kept going along and playing along, but not really listening, not really being bothered. But when the time actually came, certain things truly bothered them. And then when one was talking, the other was wondering, why are you talking like this? I thought you always liked, I thought you always liked my roast like that. And yet the person's like, no, I don't like your roast like that. I like it like this, but I never say it because I don't want to sound as if I'm an idiot. And I'm like pig-headed and I'm arrogant and I don't appreciate you. So it's something like that, guys, that I'm seeing here. Somebody here was hiding their feelings and emotions so much that they didn't want to hurt the other person. Yet when you do that in the long term, you are hurting the relationship. It's important to have that open dialogue so that you can have the truth between the both of the both of you here we also have indecisiveness at some point in time because of all of this because of the feelings and emotions that were just being bottled up here there was a sense of indecisiveness and paranoia and dishonesty they weren't making a choice just like the order and chaos card dishonesty they weren't really being that honest right? Disingenuous surrender. And also there was paranoia. Why paranoia? Sometimes people just go with the flow in the relationship because they don't want to rock the boat. They're paranoid. They're scared that, oh my goodness, if I say this, my person of interest might just leave. Sometimes that paranoia comes from there as well. They don't want to argue. They don't want to fight. Also having that level of Trust is important for them, and they don't want to rock the boat in any way. Here we also have the Four of Staves. The Four of Staves here, it talks about a lack of stability, not really wanting to create a home and not really wanting that closure. It never really made a difference to them. Here it talks about Wanting stability, but having frustrations and disappointments at home. Possibly a marriage or domestic partnership that may have gone wrong. We have here wanting stability, frustrations or disappointments at home. So you remember how there was a third party card right there. Frustrations at home. So for a small portion of you, if it is a third party situation, it was very frustrating at home. You have a person at home, it doesn't work out, and therefore you want to go outside and like have an affair with somebody else, um, or just have the companionship, even an emotional affair, have the companionship with somebody else. The problem here is that this individual, they didn't want to close it. They didn't want any type of closure. They didn't want to settle down. But the reason why is because there were problems at home and I mentioned this in a video earlier too, charity begins at home, right? Yes, when we're children, charity begins at home. But even if you have a positive environment at home, if you have a happy environment at home, people will want to be in that environment. How many people leave storming out when we have an argument? People leave the home. It's actually better to just leave the home instead of staying there and fighting and getting violent, right? Violence never helps. But what happens? There's that lack of positivity within the home environment, and it breaks people apart. That's what happened here. In this person's personal life, something has happened that makes them not believe in relationships. That makes them feel as if it's just nothing. It's not important to them. And because of that, there's this level of paranoia, distrust, dishonesty. So whatever happened here, Leo, I can definitely see this happened because of this person's background, wherever they are from, disingenu disingenuous surrender. This is something that molded them into what they are now. For the majority of you, this is not your fault. This is something, this is a them problem. It's not a you problem. So it's something that they have to get over. They have to learn from. And eventually they will. 
but it may take some time. Very complicated, this one. Okay. I have here the Beginner's Tarot. <clears throat> here I look into any actions, any plans, any intentions that this person may have. Hmm. Interesting. Very nice. Very sweet. Oh my God. Very sweet, subtle cards. Talk about third party. You got it right there. So this reading just became a whole lot narrow, okay? This is definitely a third party situation. And the third party can mean between a person and another person or a thing and another person, a desire and another person. All right, we have here Queen of Cups. With the Queen of Cups, we see here that your person of interest really does admire you and love you because they feel that you are that type of person that gives them unconditional love, unlike the person that they are with right now. They don't feel these feelings with the other person. Maybe they did in the beginning. Maybe things changed, relationships change, people change. And then they became sour, and now they met somebody new. And look at this. All this love, this freshness, feeling alive again, vibrant again. This person feels that there is this unconditional love that comes from you. Keep that positive energy flowing. Love is always good. <clears throat> I got bronchitis, guys. You might hear me wheezing. There's wheezing going on in my little pipes in there. You can hear an organ play when I'm talking sometimes. So just bear with me if you hear this strange sound. That's me and my bronchioles. Hopefully, I'll get better soon. All right, three of pentacles. Um, we have here a situation where, wow, if this is a third party situation, my God, you guys have either met at work, either in, in the past or it could be current. This could also be that you have met through somebody or there's an association through which the both of you know each other. If that's the case, 100%, this person's falling in love with you. Absolutely falling in love. They can't help it. So here we have a situation also. If by chance you have not been working with this person, not does, doesn't have to be that case, there's a sense of manifesting. This person wants to manifest something with you. They want to have a partnership with you. They want to create something with you. Construct a partnership and build this relationship they have this desire to do so. Now, why do they have this? Because of the Nine of Cups. Because you are their wish come true. They have realized that emotionally, you are the one that truly does fulfill them. And they want you for that. They love you for that. What are they planning on doing in the coming future? We have here the Eight of Pentacles. With the Eight of Pentacles, your person of interest, this is what I call the love workshop. They are going to try by hook and by crook, try a strategy, some type of a plan. How am I going to get my person? How am I going to get my Leo? In between that, they have to make a choice. <clears throat> now, for some of you, it's a choice between this person and somebody else, another person. But it could also be a choice between a person and and perhaps a dream job, like I'd mentioned a while ago in another reading. Maybe there's a dream job that they really always wanted to go to, and it's far away. Or they have to sacrifice their time with you to, in order to be with their children on the weekends. There's a custody battle or something like that. Maybe somebody is sick. Hopefully not. But they have to take that time, energy, and effort. I'm seeing a project, actually. I'm seeing a project where there's construction. 
and somebody has to spend extra hours after work to complete this construction and therefore they cannot actually give that time, energy and effort to yourself, Leo. This is for probably one person out there. Anywho, what we see here are really positive, positive cards. And this person's working on it. They're working on it. That's what they're doing. Eventually, I do see that they're going to make a choice because the choice is a wish and that wish is you. So even if they have a choice right now, Leo, and I know you don't like hearing the word choice, but when you have an individual and you have two things on the side, that individual, the English word for that is to make a choice. So please understand, don't be offended. The word is choice. This person has to make a choice between yourself and something else or someone else. The choice is going to be you, though. That's a thing. Let them go through their little phase, their little workshop. They're trying to work things out, trying to make things better. Eventually, things will change and they will become better. For the both of you. This is a very truthful and very loving relationship because you have a lot of good cards here. Nine of Cups, emotional contentment. Is there such a word? Emotionally content. I'm just going to do a quick prayer. All right. These messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, as well as Uriel. Wow. Recovery. I have not seen that card in a long time. Um, and some of my readings that I've uploaded, actually, this card has not come up at all. Recovery. No. Let go. Some of you have truly been very, very depressed and upset. And there's different levels and variations of depression. Oh, my Lord. Big time. Yes, health has been a problem. Two cards in this deck that are related for me to health. You got both cards. Both of them are here. So definitely the angels. Yep, it's up to you right there. Look for a sign. Not the right time. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we have here recovery. I'm going to go a little differently with this, with this reading. Um, so I'm going to start with this one and this one recovery and improving health. So this does indicate that there has been a problem when it comes to health and this connection, this connection has become so, I'm getting the word overbearing. This person may be overbearing to the point and I'm getting the word controlling. So there could have been a situation in this connection where you have felt very much controlled, not enough freedom, you didn't feel as if you were being valued. You're being taken for granted. Because of that, sometimes what does happen, people, they tend to fall ill in various ways. There's, I'm seeing the words, stress, anxiety, and depression. And drained, if you hear a whisper, that is me whispering. I see it in my mind's eye and I whisper it and then I say it out loud <clears throat> before I forget what I saw. So here we also have, no, it is important to let go of this person. You have here, it's up to you card. This does mean that there's two choices here. Some of you that may wish to stay with this person, others of you may wish not to be. For those of you that do not want to be with this person, this message is for you. Recovery is coming. But only if you let go there will be improving health because this person has drained you. You have been through a lot, but emotionally, spiritually, and physically in the coming future, you will be ready to tackle whatever 
comes your way. It is up to you, but do look for a sign. The signs may be just that last straw. I've had it. Enough is enough. Red flags. To see red flags, to recognize it, to understand it, to believe in it, and then to take action. Here we have a situation where you will be seeing signs and synchronicities, but also within this entire situation, there's going to be a sign and you will realize that, you know what, this person is not for me. Leo, if this person makes you sick in a way, it's time to move on. Nothing is worth that. Your health is worth everything. Health is wealth. Health is happiness. You don't have your health. Well, health, you got nothing. We also have here, it's not the right time. With this card, not the right time. Now, what does that mean? It does mean that it's up to you and you're going to be making a choice. And you will be ready emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Physically means that recovery and improving health that will occur. But right now is not the right time for you to be engaging with this person. Once you become a bit stronger, then you will be able to at least stand up for what you believe in and tell them how it is that you feel. Some of you may not even want to do that. You just want to shut the door, and that's okay. Now, for those of you that want to be with this person, first things first, health comes first. Here we have recovery and improving health. This will only happen after you still let go. You stop contacting this person. You don't, you have the no contact rule there. You focus on yourself. Remember, you do have the eight of pentacles. This person's going to be working towards coming towards you. They are in a mode in their brain right now where from the lovers, they're going to go into the hermit mode and then they're going to be wiser and then they're going to grieve. Then they're going to come back. There's a whole procedure here. It's not going to happen just from A to D. There's the B and the C in the middle too. So it's going to take some time for this person. In the meantime, they are saying that emotionally, spiritually, and physically, you are going to start to change. You're going to notice these differences and you will be able to tackle whatever is thrown to you in the coming future. They're also saying here to look for a sign. This could be signs and synchronicities, positive signs. It could even be a negative sign, a red flag. But sometimes a red flag can also act like not only a warning, but it gives you the information that you need in order to talk to this person, to try to make things right with them, if that is what you want. Right now, however, the angels are saying it's not the right time. They want you to recover. They want you to have better health and to take care of yourself. <clears throat> By letting go, you will allow this person to start to miss you, to start to value you. And when they value you, then they see the worth. When they have the worth, then they are actually afraid of losing something. Now, for those of you that are going through hard times in terms of your physical self, which is associated to your bodily functions, which are your chakra centers. I do have a package that's still open. It's related to this, and I recommend that you get that if you feel that there's negative energy around you that's been bringing you down. Your chakra centers are associated to your bodily functions. And I have the ability, uh, remotely, to have a look into your home, around your aura, inside of your body, which are your chakra centers, with the help of my angel guide and my higher intuitive self, I'm able to do that. So with that package, which is called the Chakra Checkup Package, I am able to tell you this and to teach you how to get rid of these things to rebalance your body. It's not a typical way that people use uh, when you do actual meditation or typical yoga. My methods are slightly different, but they are effective. 
So have a look at that as well. For those of you that really feel that this energy has been very negative in your life and that you just want to, you want to get rid of it now, you will start to notice a difference. Also, for those of you that want to just get rid of negative energy in general, um, and if you don't want such a detailed reading, you can always have a look at the Holy Light Package, which is one of my best sellers. That plus the Water Wellness Package, those two combined are very powerful. I recommend that you get that for those of you that feel the need to get rid of these negative energies. Now, also, I wanted to mention to some of you, I do have my other channel, Astrointia Audio absolutely free videos um, beginning to end. And I recommend that you have a look at some of those videos related to relationships. I have some relationship advice videos, so they may be helpful to see the perspective of the other person because typically they don't tell you what they feel, but because I can see and feel people's emotions and feelings, I have expressed that in those videos. So you could see that as well on my other channel, Astrointia Audio. All right. You all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys again. Bye now.